In this demonstration, we'll learn how to create a button symbol and we'll also include animation on the mouse over feature. I'm just going to create a new file here. I'll use my preset called Standard Action Script 3 and click Create. I happen to be working in the 2019 version of Animate. And I'm going to save my file right now. It's a good practice to save your files immediately when you create them. And for this, I'll just save it on my desktop and I'll call it button01.fla and save. Okay, so here we are with a blank screen. I'm just going to reset my screen to fit in window. And I think I'll draw a circle with a stroke around it and we'll animate the stroke on the mouse over when we create this. So I'll start with my oval tool. And in fact, I'm just going to stretch this over so that you'll be able to see my menus. They seem to pop out a little bit on the uh, with the screen capture software I'm using. Okay, so anyway, let me go to the color here. And you can see there, actually let me just shrink it a bit more just so you can see these menus and then I'll stretch it back out. There we go. So I just want to select the green for the fill and I already have black for the stroke but formally I'll go out here and do that. Okay, now let me just set this to a nice round number four for the stroke. Hit my tab key to enter that. And I'm going to create a circle now by just holding my shift key down after I start to draw. And let's say I'll make it that big. Okay, and going to my selection tool, I will select that whole thing by double clicking it. And I'm going to convert this to a button. So we do that by going modify, convert the symbol. And we have three choices basically. I'm going to start by naming it button. That's what it will be called in the library. And then under type, make sure to choose button out of those three choices. Click OK and now it is a symbol known as a button. So to get inside the, the symbol's timeline, you do need to double click it on the stage, as you probably know. So let's do that right now, double click it here. And you can see now I'm actually inside of the button timeline. You can see from the navigation at the top here. Now the button timeline is different than the others. It has what are called four states, the up state, the over state, the down state and the hit state. Let me explain each one of these. The up state is the normal state when you are not engaging the button, so it's what it looks like when it's sitting static on the screen. The over state is what happens when your mouse rolls over the shape of the button. That shape of the button, let me just skip to the hit state, is determined by what's in the hit window. Now, unless I keyframe these off, this shape will be also the hit state. But what I want to do is I want to keyframe the overstate and change the color to start with of the fill. And that means that when my mouse rolls over it, it will shift to whatever the graphic is in the overstate. So let's click on that frame right there. And F6 is the keyboard shortcut. I'm keyframing it now. So now that that's keyframed, it will be separated from what's in the up state. One can span across all four states, and that's fine. You just won't have any visual changes when the user engages the button. But we have created a keyframe here. I'm going to go on the stage, select the color, and simply make a color change. Let's just go over to this school bus yellow here. Okay, so now when it's normal, it's that. When the mouse goes over, it's that. And I'll do a quick test movie. I'm going to use my keyboard. Uh, command return on the Mac. Control, enter or return on the PC. And when I mouse over, you see how that changes. Okay, it does two things in fact. It changes the graphic and it also changes the cursor to the little hand. Okay, so that's a, an actual button with a bit of a response to it on the overstate when the user engages the shape of that button. Okay, so let's close that now and let's make it more sophisticated. So we're going to add an animation. What I propose to do is we take this stroke and we animate it getting larger and fading out similar to a radar blip, if you will. So here's what we can do. Despite the fact that this is a unique timeline with four states, we can have multiple layers. So what I propose to do is to create a second layer, Q, 
keyframe, like we'll copy the stroke, paste it in place in the overstate on a keyframe, and then turn it into a movie clip and animate it as a shape tween. So that's the concept and that's what I'm going to do now. So I'll start, I'll actually rename this layer, I'll call it base button. Okay, and I'll create a new layer and I'll call this one animation just so it's clear what these layers are designated for. So I do want to isolate this, otherwise my animation would run currently across both the upstate and the overstate, meaning it would animate immediately when the viewer saw it. So let's go in here, select that keyframe and hit F6, and I've isolated it. Now I'm going to click away for a second. You can see it's got the little circle, which indicates it's a keyframe. So what I want to do now is go back Select the stroke very carefully. Do not select the fill. Copy it. And at this point, I propose to lock my base button. So I'm going to lock it. That's just a safety precaution. And then I'm going to click on the frame in the animation layer in the overstate and edit, paste in place. That means it will drop it in the exact same location it came from paste in place and you can see it highlighted right there. So what I want to do at this point while it's still highlighted is convert that to a movie clip and it's inside of that movie clip that will create the animation. So let's just go up to modify, convert to symbol, make sure it's a movie clip. I'm going to name this radar because that's sort of the effect that I'm going to create and that's the name that you will see in the library on this movie clip symbol. I click OK and you can see the blue marquee indicating that it's a symbol and in order to get inside of it on its own timeline I do need to double click it on the stage which I'll do now. OK and you can see where we are. We're in a movie clip in a button on my scene one timeline. So here I propose to animate this. I'm just going to stretch the view of my timeline a bit and I'll start by right clicking on that first frame and going create shape tween. Now in this version as opposed to older versions when I right click and create a shape tween it does span out but it also includes an automatic keyframe on the last frame and that's quite convenient for me because what I want to do is I want to animate this just between two keyframes and I want to make this get bigger on the last keyframe and I also want to fade it out so that it over time fades to invisible. So it's two things I want to change. I'll start with the size. So with it currently selected as it is, I'm going to go to my free transform tool. I can just click and drag. Now I'm going to hit my shift key after I start dragging which will constrain it to a perfect circle. Now in this version it does resize from the center point out which is perfect. So I'm going to just go about that big and I, I'm going to go back to my selection tool and I can go into the stroke fill box at this point with it still selected and you see over here we have alpha that's the opacity drag that down to zero and simply scrub your playhead to make sure that effect worked and it did. I can see that it's fading out as it gets larger. And that's really it. I definitely want to save this file. In fact, I should have been saving as I was going along. My bad. However, I've saved it now. And I believe I'm actually complete. But let's just go back one level at a time. Go back to the button. And I'll just explain again. We have this single keyframe here with a movie clip on it and the inside of that movie clip is where the animation occurs and it's just that little black stroke getting larger and fading out. Now a movie clip, let me go back in here for a second, will repeat continuously. It will loop endlessly unless I was to put some action script in here to stop it at a specific frame but default it loops. So let's go back to button and then back to scene one and I could have just squ jumped straight to scene one if I wanted. Um, you see that little asterisk up there that means again it hasn't been saved from its last set of changes so I'm simply going to save that and you see the asterisk disappeared 
meaning that the file is currently saved up to its latest changes. All right, let's just do a test movie now. Control, test, and then when I mouse over, lo and behold, there is my little radar animation and you can see that it's getting larger and fading out and it is looping as long as I'm engaging the mouse in other words as long as my cursor is over the mouse and that is how we make an animated button and I want you to create one of these today for your assignment